his teammates George Martin called today's guest greatness personified. Coach John Madden said that defensively, he had as big an impact as any player I've ever seen. Folks, while he revolutionized the NFL, this Hall of Fame linebacker with 56 on his jersey turned a mediocre New York Giants team into a Super Bowl champion in 1986 and 1990. It is my pleasure to welcome the most fearsome football player of them all, Mr. L.T. Lawrence Taylor. And what we've learned with L.T., you don't conduct an interview just like he did when he played. He runs the show. So what time is tea time? Tea time's in about, looks like in about 42 minutes. About 42 minutes? Two minutes so, so we got 41 minutes to get this done. No, you got about 32 minutes because I need 10 minutes to go warm up. <laughs> okay. So our award-winning uh, director, uh, mm -hmm. Greg Foster, said, in all the years he's done these award-winning shows, you are the first guest who's come on here with his golf shoes, meaning that, hey, I'm going to play golf. Because, see, I get up in the morning at 7 o'clock in the morning. Okay. To, to, to go play golf Why so every early? morning. Why so early? Because my wife gets up at 7.02. <laughs> so, so the marriage is working out well with yeah, that kind babe, of routine. I tell you what, it works out well. It's, it, it works out well. LT, you were telling me now, first of all, how is it that you became so addicted to golf? What oh. is it? Um, you know what? I, I tell you, as a, you know, an athlete, as a celebrity, and, and a lot of us guys, you know, a, it's, there's no place we can go. You go to a, a store, you get hounded, you go to a restaurant. So mm. you can go to a golf course, sit there for five hours, you and your buddies, Play around the golf, nobody bothers you. They're worried about their own golf ball, mm -hmm. you know? And I tell you what, I just enjoy it. It's, they, I, if I'm worried about something, that if, if I can't think, hey, I can, on the golf course, I can work it out somewhere. So you know, that's your having, sanctuary. Yeah, if I'm having a real bad day, then you know what? It's rough. It's rough. On your partners yeah, out there. It's rough. I'll well, look, you. if that's the case, huh? Charles Barkley, why does he play <laughs> golf? <laughs> Lawrence, that's the worst looking swing Ben Wright, the former great golf announcer, said, mm -hmm. you know what? I think I've seen a swing somewhere in that flaw of his. Uh -huh. It's one of the worst swings around. Back in the 80s, Charles Ball could hit his golf ball. I mean, he could hit his golf ball. He could shoot 79, 80, 81. He stayed around that area. And then I think he went and took a lesson. And the lesson screwed him up? I think he took a lesson uh, from a guy that wanted to beat him. Right. So, <laughs> so that's it. And that's what happened. That's what happened. I can't, I, can't, I can't watch that. You know, that, that just, that, I can't watch that. And I, was, and I sit there and I look, and when he goes to swing, I got to turn like this. Oh, Is that bad? That I can't, I can't it hurts you that, that badly. I can't, I can't watch Contrast that. him with your good friend Michael Jordan. How good is his game? Jordan has a good game. I mean, okay. he, can, he, he, he can hit it. He can roll that rock. The ball goes right in that hole. <laughs> So I honestly, just, how good is your game? Um, well, I'm playing pretty good. But <laughs> handicap is roughly around. Uh, I am a 1.6, but I'm trending higher. You're trending higher. Yeah, Sounds good. Higher. Compared to football, and we're going yeah. to talk a lot more about that in your life in general. But compared to football, how do you compare the highs associated with doing well in golf versus football? Ah, uh, well, you know, hey, when you it all depends on what you shoot. You shoot a, a great round, you know, it's, it's nothing like it. But it doesn't compare to football. Okay. You know? It all doesn't right. compare. No, let's, let's, don't, let's be real. You know, a, uh, when you run out there in front of 80,000 people and, and when you hit somebody and you, and you feel the life just go out of them, <laughs> I mean, it's, that's, it is, that's exciting. And you feel <laughs> the life go out of them. We'll find out more about that after this. <laughs> Lawrence Taylor's New York Giants teammate Carl Nelson said, quote, the thing that made him a great player was his total disregard for his body. Some of the things he did on the field, a sane person just wouldn't do. Is that an accurate description of the way you went about it, Lawrence? Well, God, you know, back in those days, you know, back in those days, we, we weren't given time off to the mm. heel, you know? Mm. Like, man, I tell you, I remember when I was in college, and I had got hit and got had something 
internal bleeding. And my trainer told me to go swallow a Band-Aid. And I said, this is so Swallow a Band-Aid. That's, that's the type of mind, uh, mentality that we had. That's what we do. Wow. You know, you know I, football, I remember football when it was a gladiator sport, mm -hmm. you know. And, and that's what made me excited about it. I used to, you know, watch all the Romans fight and stuff, and I felt like I was, like a, I was in, the, in the arena. And, and I found out something very early in life about football. If you get around that ball, a lot of things happen. A lot of good things happen when you're around that football. So when people talk about, hey, I got my man, I got, I, mean, I don't want to hear about you got your man. Your man got the football. Go get him. That's what, they, that's what they don't understand. Simple as that. The game, yes, man. That's the, the ball is right there, and, that's, and somebody's going to take it. Guess what? I want it, too. So let's, let's go get it. And that's what everything happens around the football. But they actually, throughout your career, folks tried you on the offensive side of the ball before. Was that ever of any interest to you? You even played nose tackle. I mean, how is it that it came about that you knew linebacker was your spot? Well, it, it really was that I knew linebacker was my spot. I was a tight end in, in high school, mm -hmm. okay. And then I, I, I was an uh, uh, outside backer uh, in college. And, and You didn't play nose tackle. They moved me along around the places. Mm -hmm. I, was on, I was a nose tackle. I was uh, a safety. I was an uh, inside backer. I kept being moved around simply because you're a good player. We got to find some place to put you. Mm -hmm. So good players, you can't sit them on the bench. Good players got to find a way to play, and that's what we do, and that's what I like, and that's what they, they, that would you know sets me off. I love it. What I made really the Bill sometimes. Parcells Lawrence Taylor relationship? as excellent as it was on the field. What did you like about how he coached? I love Bill Parcells simply because Bill is a, a man type of coach. Mm -hmm. I mean, hey, listen, he, he you know, the, the old saying is that you treat everybody the same. Hell no. You treat your stars like a star. Mm -hmm. You treat the ducks like a duck. Okay, I mean that's what I mean. I like to, when when we used to go to on our way trips, Bill Parcells would come on the bus. He have his he have his sheet, his roll call sheet. He would look down that sheet. LT, you here? Oh, yeah, Coach, I'm here. Let's go, bus driver. We got enough to win. Let's go. Simple as that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> LT, is this story true? Now, this is what Phil okay. Sims says. Because Coach did play to the talent, the immense talent mm -hmm. that you were. You were out on the golf course, heading home, rode by the stadium. Is that a true story? I got there a little late. I was, got there Hold like tight. second quarter. So the viewers will know. Okay. LT rode by the stadium, saw the lights on in the stadium, said, is there a game going on there? <laughs> And it was I your thought team it was play. Monday night game. I thought it was a Monday night game. You know? So, so, you, I got so you show up. Go ahead. What I happened? got there about last play of the first quarter. Right. Going into the second quarter. And Bill, he's hot. He's hot. I don't understand why he's so mad. Because you weren't there, yeah, LT. Okay, but, hey, hey. So he looks at me. Give me that evil eye. I said, man, don't blame me. Blame the force in front of me. It was so slow. <laughs> <laughs> no, but Bill, no hey, you did. Go ahead. Hey, Bill and myself, we had a great relationship. I'll tell you what. He really thought it was his team, but it wasn't his team. It was my team. Anyway, <laughs> but. <laughs> go ahead, LT. But he was, listen, but what a great person. Hold, hold a thought. Okay. Don't go anywhere. We're going to come back because LT is running the show. More after this. anyone think differently, LT is one of the brightest people around, no matter what he may say. Even coming off of that segment where he said, they weren't doing Sunday night games. when I, I, How would I think that they were playing Sunday night? I'm out playing golf. But yet, LT, watching film of the opposition, you had a un an uncanny ability 
to figure out exactly what their opponents were going to do because when you, when you were on the field, you knew where their play was going. Every player on that defense, I know what their job is. I know what the tackle is doing. I know what the nose tackle is doing. I know what the far tackle is doing. I know what the backside backer is doing. I know what all these guys are doing. I know what you're doing. I know what you're doing. And you guys back there, I know what you're doing. So I, hey, that's how that's how, I got to know that for I, know, for I can know what the hell I'm doing. Mm -hmm. You know, I got to figure out, I got to figure out how do I fit into a defense. If I know where everybody's at. I know where I can where I can fudge a little bit over here, fudge a little bit over there. Now, number two, uh, what you doing over there? Talk to the offensive tackle, man. Listen, you gonna throw the ball again? <laughs> Before they finish the play, you gonna throw it again? Get the hell out of here! Okay. But the quarterbacks hey. always were asking, "Where is 56? Where is 56?" Yeah, and your yeah. response hey. was. I said, don't worry about it. I'll tell you in a second. Because <laughs> you're going to be right I, there. I'll be there in a second. Okay. <laughs> I, it, it was a joy playing football in the 80s. Because, because? the rules, are, the rules are, uh, are different now. You didn't like hitting the quarterback. I was a lot friendlier, too. With, you know? Like who? I know I, Joe Montana. I never, ever. Hey, I would, I would sack him like a couple times. But you times wouldn't try to hurt him? No. Because? Um, I don't know. He, he was. Cute little boy. Hey, you treated Terry Bradshaw pretty hey, roughly. Ter Terry Bradshaw, no, listen, Terry Bradshaw, um, I got him like four times in one game. I mean, that was that was four times in mm -hmm. one game. Yeah, he no was wonder he's walking around day. with a twitch. He was having a rough day, man. He was having a rough day. Uh, Have you seen him lately? Uh, no, I haven't. But he, I, he, I, he walks around like that I, now, you know. Uh, <laughs> but um. I know, no, you know, and my favorite, you know, my favorite talk was, has always been uh, Ron Jaworski. You know, he was, hey, uh, I used to invent ways to sack him. I mean, just, just make up stuff, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's it. But, you know, what a great player he is. Uh, hey, and it's the punishment I gave him, and he always got up. Always got he up. Big always respect for got him. up. Big respect that way. Oh, man, I got a lot of respect for Jaworski. But now, Joe Theismann. Iconic. We always talk, always talk about that. What did that do to you in that game where Joe Theismann, because I remember watching that yeah. when you broke his leg and you jumped up and you called the medics, you called everybody as quickly as possible. Yeah, because I can understand because I, I've been in that situation before where mm. you've been injured and you're on the bottom of the pile. And now you got to wait for everybody to get off top of you one by one by one. Man, it seems like it takes forever. Mm. You know, so that's what I'm trying to say. Hey, hey get up. Get this, hey. Come, come, get, come get this. And when, you know, and what a, what, a, what a trooper he was. Because I'll tell you, we think we're uh, unbreakable. We just, that, 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 that nothing would ever happen to us. Everything in, on that play ended right there. Just like that. Mm. He said, man, hey. He said, LT. And I said, yeah, 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 yeah. What's up, Joe? He said, I'll be back. I said, you may be back, but not tonight. Okay. No. Ain't going to happen. Bill Parcells, you guys had such a wonderful relationship. Yes. You were being wooed by the generals, the New Jersey generals. Mm -hmm. Big contract on the table. Folks thought you were going to go. And Bill Parcells was going to get fired. Take it from there. What happened? Well, I, you, you just got to understand the story. We had, we had, um, Ray Perkins had been our coach my first two years, mm. and Bill Parcells has always been my uh, mm. defensive coordinator. Uh, Ray Perkins has gone to Alabama, so Bill Parcells, they gave Bill Parcells a, uh, the job as head coach. And that season, we was 3-12-1. and one. We, 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 we couldn't beat nobody. After that season, I remember sitting at home, and, and Donald Trump you know, gave me a call. He started talking to me, and he said, I forgot what he said because he mentioned a million dollars quick. So once he mentions that, I just forgot it. You set up. And for those who don't know, of course, <laughs> Donald Trump was putting together the New Jersey Generals, yeah. so he owned the squad. Go ahead. And he told me to call my bank. I called my bank and said, the money's in there, Mr. Taylor. Wow. I'm like, okay. So I was a New Jersey General for about five hours until the Giants <laughs> found out. And as it was, the New York Giants said they brought in Howard, Howard Snellenberger, Snellenberger from yep. Miami. It was just about ready to announce it the next day. And so when I, when I went back to the Giants and stuff, I said, guys, if you fire Bill Parcells, then 
all deals are off. I'm hey, listen. I'm no. I, I I won't. I don't want to play for uh, for Snellenberg. I don't want no. And so they send Snellenberg on home and kept Bill Parcells. And Parcells knew you did that. Yes. And he hey, listen. And I tell you what. He um, he has thanked me enough, but he doesn't have to thank me because I thank him for the things that he's done for me. In training camp, the first week of training camp, he was on my butt every day. Ah, you didn't do this. I would take him, rush the quarterback, put a sweet move on him. Hey, about to tackle the quarterback, he would throw the ball. I'd turn around, run down the field, and damn near intercept the ball. <laughs> Hey, wait, oh. hold, hold, hold. no yeast in that story. Hey. There's no yeast in that story. Well, maybe a little bit. Okay, okay, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> LT, we have about one minute left in this segment here, and, and I want to use this segment and the next one. LT, mm -hmm. you were reckless, awesome, fearsome on the football field. Mm -hmm. How are you doing in the game of life? How do you size yourself up now? We're gonna talk about that now or the next time. However segment? you want. Give next us a little segment. give us a little preview now. <laughs> now you just want me to tease you, man. Huh? <laughs> As he approached retirement, Lawrence Taylor believed, quote, I saw cocaine as the only bright spot in my future, end quote. LT's book, of course, Over the Edge, LT Over the Edge, it certainly defined how you played on the football field as everyone said, the most fearsome player out there. LT, are you managing the game of life the way you want? God damn. That's, 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 a, that's a tough question. Mm -hmm. Am I managing the, the game of life Mm -hmm. the way I want to. And I would say, strong as I was in the uh, game of football, I didn't, as weak as I was in the game of life. Now, not because I wanted to be weak, and, you know, back in, the, back in our, our days, we mm -hmm. had ABC, CBS, and NBC. If you didn't hear about it, on Tuesday, you ain't gonna hear about it because they on to another story. So, hey, it's just be great. It's just be great because you could get away with a lot of stuff. Anyway, but um, I, the game of life, yes, I'm managing it better now. I, people ask me all the time, if you had the chance to change your life, do anything you want to do, mm -hmm. what would you do? Like right now, I got uh, my youngest son. Uh, Mally, he's, he's 11 years old, you know, um, adopted him like nine years ago. And if going back in my life and changing something would change me having Mally, then I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it. No, because I've seen the change and me because of him. No, I wouldn't do it. Because of him. Because of him. LT, uh -huh. I've often said to you, love you much, praying for the best for you. Yes. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank Lawrence you. Taylor has been our guest, the one and only Lawrence Taylor. I'm James Brown. Tune in next week for another edition of the James Brown Show.